here today with Courtney Scher, who is the owner of Courtney's Forever Friends, which is a pet sitting company, which mm -hmm. you started. And um, I know on your website you do a great job of explaining like why you started this. Okay. And I know you're from Ohio, like me. Mm -hmm. So if you can kind of start with just you know growing up, is this something you envisioned, or how like what your path was like? Growing up, I wanted to be many different things. Uh -huh. I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a lawyer, um, I wanted to be on the TV, I wanted to be on the radio, I wanted to be everything. Lot, yeah. <laughs> yes. In high school I did some interning at a radio station. Um, in college I geared more towards the TV. So I graduated with a degree in communications, um, which is super broad. Yes. But I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So. I, it's funny, I started out in communications as well, just because I also, I wanted to do film, but I was still living in Ohio, and I was going to Kent State, and that was like the closest thing I could pick, and finally I was like, okay, you have to like, kind of leave here if yeah. you want to study yeah. something else. Before you start college, at least for myself, you have an idea that you'll go to college and know what you want, and then get the job in the career right. that you're ideally. So prepared for. That's the ideally. But then you're done and it's like nothing's changed. Like you no. just have a piece of paper and you're some yeah. of us aren't even like more clear on where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Did you just like take a job to get a job or did yeah I did. I wanted to get out of Ohio as soon as possible. <laughs> no offense, it's just going. I wanted to live here. I love the ocean. Mm -hmm. I love the West Coast. I think it's so much better than the East Coast. So I was going to save money um, and move home with my parents, but instead I moved to Arizona with a friend who was a traveling nurse. Okay. So um, I ended up living rent free with her. Nice. I got I worked at the front desk of a hotel in Arizona. Um, got paid very poorly. It's the front desk. I liked it at first. It mm -hmm. was a cha change. It was a challenge at first, but then it's like. I was working with high schoolers and I was a college graduate, yeah. so I'm like, mm, I need to move on. So then I got a job at University of Phoenix Online um, as an academic counselor. Again, just a job. I liked it at first, but yeah. I was doing the same thing every day, day after day. And my same friend I lived with, she did, she was a nurse at a um, at a camp. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll try being a camp counselor, see how that goes. Mm -hmm. So I was a camp counselor <laughs> for a summer. So that was that was bad. Okay. That, that was bad. <laughs> so then um, I moved out here and still had you know, just jobs. So then I got a job at Catamaran Resort. And I worked in a group sales office as the assistant. It was cutthroat. Mm -hmm. I'm not like a cutthroat salesperson like mm -hmm. they were. So, yeah. um, and they wanted someone to move up. So, um, I was let go, and then I was unemployed after that. And then that's when I decided to go out of the country. That's a huge yeah. step. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I don't know what I want to do with my life. I've tried the sales that like sales. I've tried hospitality. I've tried, you know, the corporate job from University of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. No future with any of those. I yeah. didn't see, and it's just every day I was just, especially at the catamaran, I just dreaded going in because I was the. I'm not going to get into detail. <laughs> That's an awful feeling, though. Yes. I'm familiar with that. Just because I did, it wasn't a future, and everyone that worked with, you know, the managers and the direct, they all knew it wasn't my future. Mm -hmm. So then the job that you got um, when you left the United States is one that you did like, right? I did, over there. Mm -hmm. I liked it over there. I taught English in Chile, um, but I also volunteered with like rescue group. There was a lot of street dogs in Chile, um, So, but there's a rescue group I helped out, and they, you know, help out the, you know, the dogs they see on the street that are mm -hmm. just they're limping or they're just sick, they're not eating. Um, so I helped volunteer with them as well. Is that when you, is that like your first time volunteering with animals or had that been? No, before, when I was unemployed here, before I went there, I volunteered at the Department of Animal Services. Oh, okay. And with ARF, Animal Rescue Resource Foundation. I was, I was probably, I was at that shelter probably every day. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And with ARF, I was at their events, every event, so. 
Um, and family always told me, Courtney, you need to do something with animals. Yeah. But I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I, I couldn't be a vet. And I, th I thought, well, how can, how can I make a living have, being a pet sitter or a dog walker? I just didn't, I didn't think it could happen. So, obviously at some point, um, it did happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so was that, um, did you keep it an on the side thing because like, you're like, oh, I can't bring in enough income off of that? Y yes, yes. I think it really, it really hit me that I can do this when I was out of the country and I'm like, I, I really, because I taught English and I was more independent, like more of an, I didn't work, well, I worked for an institute the first six months and then I worked, um, as a private, as a private um, teacher, I taught private classes. Okay. And that's when I realized I really liked being on my own. Yeah. And you know, I really liked helping the, those dogs. Yeah. And I reached out to some friends here, and it turned out a friend in Ohio she has her own pet services business. Okay. So. So when it comes to the actual business side of things, how like I'm not. Personally, I'm not aware of like how much is involved in that. Is was that a lot to take on? Like yeah, and fam people, family and kept telling me you need a business plan. You need this in place and this in place and this in place. And like, yeah, <laughs> no idea what. So I just kind of went into it blindsided. Is that the word? Put blinds on and yeah. Um, just took it day by day and had to have part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. Like when I first got back from Chile, I taught English here, but it's definitely just different over here. Mm -hmm. So um, once that stopped, I really focused more on researching. I did a lot of Googling with starting your own pet services business. Um, and there were a lot of sites that popped up that helped me. Um, like I had no idea, I mean I got a business, I found out I had to get a business license. Yeah. And, all that through the internet, um, through the internet, pretty much. That's good. And <laughs> That's yeah, very helpful. Yeah. So what was when you were growing up? I'm just curious. Um, whenever like someone's an entrepreneur, what their example was? Like, did your parents like their jobs, or what did they? Because I kind of um, know a lot of people where <laughs> it's kind of like as you became an adult, people were like, it doesn't matter if you don't like your job that's what you do, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's life, and nobody likes their job. Did you have any of that mentality, or? Yeah, well, gr growing up, um, when I was little, 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 my dad, um, and his, and his dad owned a chocolate factory. Oh my gosh, yes. that's awesome. Yes. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so I have kind of entrepreneur, and my mom, she helped, they split, they divorced, but, um, so my dad and my grandpa just ran the chocolate factory, and then when my grandpa passed away, my dad tried to do it on his own, mm -hmm. but he couldn't. So then he went more of the sales way. Um, my mom is a sales rep for um, for like vitamins and supplements for That's natural cool. food stores, and they both. I mean, my dad he's more because he has three more kids. He got remarried and had three more kids. So my dad's more just whatever, and he's old, you know, he's, what, 65, around then 60, so, he has two kids he has to put through high school, oh. one through college, so, now it's more of like a money job mm. thing, but definitely with the chocolate factory, and he, I mean, that's so cool, yeah, yeah, and my mom really enjoys what she does, you know, she, she does a lot of traveling, because she goes to different health food stores all throughout Ohio, and Kentucky, Indiana, Indianapolis, so. What did your family and friends think when, were they supportive, or did you have anyone kind of saying, like, oh, that's not going to work? No, everyone was supportive. Oh, that's wonderful. That's everyone awesome. Was supportive. I mean, it was rough at first, because um, I, uh, I had to have two other part-time jobs, um, and then trying to get this started, so it was a lot, it was tough, but, um, Everyone was, everyone knew, like, this is Courtney's path. This oh, is, yeah. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. And you do a lot um, of events still, right? I do. I go, I have, um, I just did um, a dog event. What is it? It was a Hounds for Hope dog event where I had a booth. 
um, I'm doing a bunny event in a couple of weeks. Oh, very and cool. Did it, I did it last year, I think the year before, and people bring their bunnies on leashes. It's <laughs> too cute. Oh, that sounds awesome. It's too cute, yes. And I have to show up for Yeah. That. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so just, you know, I am a huge animal lover as well, and just, um, even though this doesn't have to do with your job, if someone's interested in, like, say they don't have experience, but they want to make some kind of a difference, um, what would you recommend when it comes to helping animals? Just go to your, your local animal shelter. Mm -hmm. um, adopt. Yeah. Adopt. We have so many dogs, cats, bunnies that are without a home. So, um, yeah, just go volunteer. Mm -hmm. there's, there's places that need so many volunteers. Yeah. Um, I know there's a Devore Animal Shelter. That's there. I mean, I at one point when I was well, no, this is when I had my business. I actually drove to San Bernardino mm -hmm. and picked up cats and drove them back here and brought them to, to other a shelter. foster. Oh, to a foster. that's wonderful. Yeah. So just if people have time, oh, to, I mean, that's a long. It was a long day, but yeah, for people who have time and. And the divorce that you mentioned for people who don't know is a very high kill yeah. shelter. It's really awful. devastating. Fostering is great, by the way. Yes, fostering too, for yeah. sure. Just to definitely. you're saving them. Yes. Just pulling them out definitely yeah. saves their lives. Did you feel like your life? Did you notice it got easier, or like were you like much happier when you finally got on? the path that you found. Just much happier. Much happier. Because I see light, 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 light. And there's so many, there's also so many areas I can go in. Mm -hmm. Like I can, it doesn't have to be dog walking and pet sitting forever. Like I can make dog clothing eventually or dog treats. Yeah. Or not so much cat treats, but more, <laughs> more dog, or cat, cat clothing maybe. <laughs> but yes, so I can go in those different venues. So that's always nice to know too. That, yeah, that is yeah. great. And it's so great because I have clients who, like, if they're home, the dogs or the cats or whatever hear my beat from my car and they come oh, through the door. And that's, that's just so sweet. awesome. What was the scariest thing, if there was a scary thing, about starting your business? Maybe when you finally, like, quit the part-time jobs and it yeah. was just... Definitely just the financial aspect. Because mm -hmm. I was out of the country for a year. I did work, but I also did enjoy myself. So I had... Some bills I had to pay. Yeah. Um, so definitely the financial aspect. Do you think it took like a leap of faith to do that or did you feel like were you kind of the person who was like well I'll save this much just to have something to fall back on or did you kind of feel like no I'm ready to start this? Yeah. I, I felt like now's the time I can't keep on putting it off and get, getting all these part-time jobs that aren't going anywhere. Kind of like, okay, let's do this, let's see how it works, and we'll give it, you know, how it's a couple months. I don't know if I even gave myself a couple months. But yeah, it was kind of like a leap of faith. What's the most rewarding thing about... Just when I have clients who tell me how how amazing I am, and how I'm such a godsend, and how I'm, <laughs> like, um... Just that feeling, the feeling when I, that I get when I enter a home and I see the dog, the cat, or even the bunnies. Uh-huh, yeah. I see them, like, they're happy to see me. That's definitely way up there. That's awesome, that, that feeling. Yeah, it must make you feel like you're in the right place. Yeah, you know, definitely. Like, reaffirm yeah, all of your decisions. Definitely. So, what advice would you give to people who are feeling stuck in their situation? Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, don't give up. I believe what's meant to be will be. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for <laughs> letting you. me in on you. Yeah. And if you are in the San Diego area, Courtney is awesome. I will always use Courtney for sure. For my little Maya. Okay, thank Wonderful. you.